I've been mentioning wanting to make a series about just math for game dev that's tangentially related to the things that you might want to do in Game Maker, and I, I haven't yet, but I guess it's better late than never, so let's talk about math. So this video is going to be about some of the common things you might want to do with vectors in the context of games and Game Maker, especially in 3D, but also just in general if you like to mess with shaders for, for regular 2D game dev. There are plenty of other things you can do with vectors, which may well be worth making videos on and talking about later, but this should be a good enough starting point for the game dev videos that I am planning on making and have made in the past. If you do want to see more of the math beyond this video, I've, I will be putting some extra resources in the video description. In particular, Freya the Shader Witch has been doing a Math for Game Dev series, which I'm kind of expecting will align pretty closely with a bunch of videos that I do want to make in the future. So if you have any interest in graphics programming at all, I would, I would definitely recommend giving them a look. Hello all you crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and let's talk about math. Vector math. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the supervillain in the room. You've probably seen this little meme floating around the internet from time to time, and occasionally in physics classrooms all over the world. Yes, I know, the magnitude and direction thing is a reasonable description of a vector, but that would be using what is called polar coordinates, and for the most part, when we do things with computer graphics and game dev, we are dealing with Cartesian coordinates which is the coordinate system that you're probably more used to seeing in math class prior to taking, like, calculus. Polar coordinates do have their uses in game dev, for example, if you're trying to do 3D camera roll, but for this video, just assume that we're going to be talking about Cartesian coordinates. So let's start at the beginning. This is a number. You can do some pretty handy things with them. You can add them together, you can subtract them, you can multiply them, you can divide them. You can also call functions on numbers to do fancy things like evaluating the square root or raising a number to a power or taking the minimum or maximum of two numbers to figure out which one is bigger or smaller. In vector math, uh, individual standalone numbers are also sometimes called scalars. This is something that may just be useful to know. This, on the other hand, is a vector. Specifically, it's a 2D vector. It has two components. Uh, commonly, the two components are referred to as X and Y. Uh, the numbers can represent anything. They don't have to represent any particular any particular concept. They're just numbers. You can do whatever you want with them. And when it comes to vectors, you're also not just restricted to just two components. You can have a vector 3 with three components, or you can have a vector 4 with four components. Fun fact, if you've ever wondered why C++'s version of basically the DS list in Game Maker is called a vector, that is because in the linear algebra sense, a vector is literally just a list of objects in order. Get to love how abstract mathematics can be sometimes, right? So vectors can really be of any size, but for the purposes of game dev, we're only going to be concerned with 2D vectors, 3D vectors, and 4D vectors, also known as Vec2s, Vec3s, and Vec4s, are somewhat more concise names for them. As I said, vectors can represent anything, but Vector2s, 2D vectors, are often used to represent a texture coordinate, with the X and Y components being referred to usually as U and V, as to not cause confusion when it comes to other types of vectors in space, such as like positions and stuff. You can use them for other things, for example, in the Fragment Shader, you often might use a Vec2 to represent a point on the screen, and note that that's a point on the screen, as, as in where a pixel's final position is, and not a point in 3D space in a 2D game. 3D vectors, Vec3s, with their components being X, Y, and Z, are commonly used to represent points in 3D space, or perhaps a normal vector, or something that's tangentially related to a normal vector. Sorry. The normal of a surface is just the vector that points perpendicularly outwards from the surface, but if you've never seen a tangent or a bitangent or a binormal vector, you can imagine that those are just normal vectors that are, instead of perpendicular to the surface, they are, um, t well, tangent to the surface, as the name implies. They come up fairly often when it comes to things like normal mapping. Vector 3s are also sometimes used to represent colors uh, with red, green, and blue components instead of X, Y, and Z, but Far more often when it comes to uh, colors, you will be using instead a 4D vector, or a Vec4. Vec4s are what you usually see when it comes to colors in, uh, in game dev and in like graphics programming, but instead of just the usual red, green, and blue color components, you will also see them coming with an alpha color component, which is the transparency, which affects how the color is blended with other colors. Somewhat confusingly, Vector4s are also used to represent points in 3D space, in these cases, the fourth coordinate is going to be called the homogeneous coordinate, and it's used to make multiplying points in space by a matrix somewhat easier in various ways. I do want to make another video about math on matrices and what happens when you do things with matrices and what happens when you, like, mix vectors and matrices, but that's probably going to be next week. Also, when it comes to transparency in vector fours, when it comes to representing colors, the way transparency affects how two color vectors may be blended is not too unlike how homogeneous coordinates work for points in space. 
interestingly enough. So despite what I just said, it's important to remember that a vector is simply a collection of values which are grouped together, and that there's really nothing special about a vector 4 that contains a position versus a vector 4 that contains color information, and you can, you can use them interchangeably in pretty much all shader languages that I know about, and the computer will compile and run your code just fine, although it's maybe not what you want to actually happen logically. In shader languages, you can use the x, y, z, and w properties of a, uh, of a vector 4 interchangeably with the red, green, blue, and alpha properties. You can mix them, match them, do whatever you want. All they do is refer to different components of that vector in a certain order, so x and r are the first components, y and green are, are the second components, and so on. So things that you can do in the land of vectors, and if you've done anything with shader programming at any point, you've probably done plenty of these. You can do the same mathematical operations on vectors that, as you can with scalar values. For the most part, you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide two vectors that are of the same size. So you can add two vec2s together, you can multiply two vec3s together. These operations will be performed component-wise. That is the fancy way of saying that if you add two vectors together, the result will be a 2D vector with the x being the sum of the two x components of the original two vector operands, and the y component being the sum of the y components of the original two operands, and the same thing for subtraction, multiplication, division, and so on. The two vectors that you do your mathematical operations on do have to be the same size, so you do have to use two vectors of the same size, two vec3s, two vec4s, and so on. This works out the same way that it does with scalar values. So if you imagine two vector twos, which represent points in space, and this is usually how vectors are introduced the first time you take a physics class in school. If you have one 2D vector, which has the components say four and three, and you have another 2D vector, which has the components say one and five, and if you add those together, the result will be a 2D vector with components of five and eight. And you can imagine how that works out visually. And the same works for the other mathematical operations that you can do on vectors. Now, you can also add, subtract, multiply, and divide vectors by scalars. In this case, this will, this will also be done component-wise. So if you have a vector, let's say, 4 and 3 again, and you multiply it by 3, the result of this calculation will be a vector 2 containing uh, 4 times 3 is 12 on the x component, and what was the other one? 3 times 3 equals 9 on the y component. You can also divide vectors by a scalar, although then you're getting into the weeds of whether or not division really exists or if you're just multiplying by a reciprocal, which is... All right, you know what, maybe that's too much math. Another thing you can do with vectors, the same way that you can do with scalar values, is pass them to functions. This is another thing that you've probably done many times if you've ever written any shader code at any point. There are some mathematical operations that you can do in vectors that are pretty much directly corresponding to operations that you can do on scalar numbers. So for example, you can take the minimum and maximum of a vector. It will evaluate the minimum and maximum of each of the components. Other common mathematical functions include clamp, which is essentially taking the minimum and maximum at the same time, so it constrains a value between two other values. In GLSLES, there is the mix function, which is essentially linear interpolation, or the lerp function that you can use to have a, have a vector value transition between two other values. But there are some functions that only make sense in the context of vectors specifically. You can get the length of a vector, which is essentially just the distance formula performed on each of the, uh, each of the components. This is sometimes also called the magnitude of a vector. If you've ever used the 2D distance formula in math class, or perhaps the Pythagorean theorem, that's all that's going on here. If you get the length between two vectors, all it returns is just the, basically the distance formula between each of their components. And if you get the absolute magnitude of a single vector, it's more or less the same thing. You just are getting the distance to the, uh, to the zero, zero origin to the vector instead of a, from one vector to another. Normalize is another important one. When you normalize a vector, you adjust each of its components so that its overall component length is one. This is very useful when it comes to do anything that involves surface normals, especially lighting. Going back to the magnitude and direction thing for a moment, if you have two vectors whose overall direction is the same but are of different magnitudes, this can affect calculations when it comes to things like how much light is reflected. And normalizing vectors so that they are all of the same component length can be extremely useful. Other important operations that you can do in vectors are the dot and cross products. The dot product in particular is used quite a lot in, in shaders and in computer graphics. The dot product of two vectors will return a single value if you have two vectors which have a unit length of 1. If they're pointing in the same direction, the dot product will be equal to 1. If they are perpendicular, the dot product will be 0. And if the two vectors are pointing in the opposite direction, the dot product will be negative 1. And if the two vectors are at some other angle to each other, then the dot product will be somewhere between negative 1 and positive 1. Whereas the cross product, if you have two 3D vectors, will produce a third vector which is perpendicular to both, which is at right angles to both.
Hence why it can be useful for figuring out the surface normal of a triangle in 3D space. If you are more of a visual person, I'll have graphics of both of those two things on the screen right now. As well as the actual calculations that they involve, because I don't really want to bog down this video by spitting out a bunch of just math terms for five minutes. Unless you're working as a hardware engineer or something, how to use these things tends to be more important than how to derive them yourself. So, that is a crash course in vectors. I hope that didn't go on for too long. There is another huge component to 3D math that's going to be pretty useful to know how to use and how they work, and that is going to be every high school algebra student's favorite subject of matrices. It's not going to be that bad. Again, if you've done anything in the vertex shader, you've probably at least seen matrices before. I am going to make another math video on matrices as well, but that's going to be a subject for later. Until then, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games and talking about math. No source code for this video, obviously, but I do try to make two game dev videos a week. One tutorial tutorial, this is stretching the definition of tutorial a little bit, but let's roll with it. And one let's make a tower defense game. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there will be links to that in all the usual places. Otherwise, I hope you found that interesting, and I will see you all later. By the way, if you want to make sure that you never get invited to a party again, you are 100% within your rights to refer to scalar values in other words, just like regular numbers, as one-dimensional vectors. You can thank me later. Special thanks to Kiara Elizabeth, Connor, David Key, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Posho, Tusk, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits or to hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.